Thank you for joining us at this time. You're watching News Analysis Live on Politics and Business TV. The top stories. Federal government says there are no discussions with foreign countries regarding the establishment of foreign military bases in Nigeria. Federal government delists Naira from all peer-to-peer -peer crypto platforms. Nigerians reject Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission's reduction of tariff payable by Band A customers. Details coming up shortly. Welcome back. I am Omoy for Peace or Center. Now let's begin with the federal government as it has clarified that there were no discussions with foreign countries regarding the establishment of foreign military bases in Nigeria. Minister of Information and National Orientation Mohammed Idris made the clarification in statement yesterday, thereby corroborating the stance of the French embassy that there was no such plan. Northern leaders had in a letter dated May the 3rd, 2024 and addressed to President Bola Tinubu and the National Assembly leaders raised concerns about the potential risks associated with such a move. The letter, according to media report, highlighted concerns about lobbying effort for defense agreements to station troops previously in Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger Republic. According to the Northern leaders, such agreement could jeopardize Nigeria's defense and security. Now, there are indications that the federal government may reintroduce the previously suspended telecom tax and other fiscal measures, a move which is reportedly in pursuit of securing a new $750 million loan from the World Bank. This is according to the Stakeholder Engagement Plan for Nigeria, Accelerating Resource Mobilization Reforms Program between Nigeria and the World Bank. It was gathered that the program's development objective is to strengthen the government's financial position by enhancing its capacity to manage and mobilize domestic resources effectively, which includes improving tax and customs compliance and protecting oil revenues. According to media reports, President Bola Tinubu had in July 2023 ordered the suspension of the 5% excise duty on telecommunications and the import tax adjustment levy on certain vehicles. But the latest development suggests that this suspension may be lifted to meet the program target for a new yet to be approved World Bank loan with negotiations reportedly ongoing between the government and the World Bank. As efforts or part of efforts to tackle exchange rate manipulators and dollar racketeers, the federal government, through the Securities and Exchange Commission, is set to delist the Naira from all peer-to-peer -peer crypto platforms, the development which is against the backdrop of the recent moves by the federal government to regulate Nigeria's crypto market. Estimated at $57 billion was disclosed by the newly appointed Director General of the Commission. Momotimi Agama. Agama had during a meeting organized by the Blockchain Industry Coordinating Committee of Nigeria confirmed that the government was currently drafting a new set of regulations to govern the crypto sector. Reports have it that the operators in the crypto space have allegedly used the P2P platforms to manipulate the Naira and the exchange rate. The federal government has issued a two-month registration deadline to point-of-sales companies to register their agents, merchants, and individuals with the Commission in line with the legal requirement and the directives of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. The agreement, which was issued through the Corporate Affairs Commission, was reached during a meeting between FinTechs and the Registrar General, CAC, Husseini Ishaq Magaji, SAN, in Abuja. At the meeting, the CSC boss said the action, which is backed by Section 863, Subsection 1 of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Kama 2020, as well as the 2013 CBN guidelines on agent banking, aims at safeguarding the businesses of fintech customers and strengthening the economy. 
Magaji said the timeline for the registration, which will expire on July the 7th, 2024, was not targeted at any group nor individual, but genuinely aimed at providing protection for businesses. Right, you're watching News Analysis live on Politics and Business TV. Still to come, presidency tackles a former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, over his claim of conflict of interest in the award of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway by the federal government. We'll bring you details of this and more after this break. Do join us again. Right, welcome back. I am Omo of Peace of Seven, right? and this is News Analysis Live on Politics and Business TV. The presidency yesterday tackled former Vice President Atiku Abubakar over his claim of conflict of interest in the award of the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway by the federal government. The former Vice President had in a statement claimed that the road project was awarded to a high tech construction company because the owner of the firm, Gilbert Chagori, had business ties with President Bola Tinubu. According to media reports, Atiku also faulted the massive demolition of buildings to pave way for the highway, saying it had the potential to discourage foreign investors. However, the presidency in a statement titled Atiku Abubakar's penchant for distorting facts and signed by President Tinubu's special advisor on information and strategy, Bayo Onanuga, dismissed the claims by Atiku, adding that the former vice president lacked the moral right to raise a question of conflict of interest. The presidency said, should Atiku, who formed Intel's Nigeria with an Italian businessman when he served in the Nigeria Customs Service, a clear breach of extant public service regulations, be the one accusing someone else of conflict of interest? Right, that leaves us with a question, but, but now let's shift gears to other matters where the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, has ordered a downward review of electricity tariff by Band A customers to 206 Naira per kilowatt per hour from uh, the 225 Naira per kilowatt per hour. According to a statement on Monday, the electricity market operator said the development was due to the appreciation of the Naira in the official exchange window. Consequently, electricity distribution companies, also known as the DISCOs, have commenced a reduction in tariffs for Band A customers beginning from yesterday. In notices to customers, the DISCO said the move was in support of improved service delivery to customers under the specified category. The downward review of electricity tariff for Band A customers is coming shortly after the federal government faulted the organized labor's opposition to the electricity tariff hike and the removal of the subsidy in the sector. The organized labor had also issued a two-week ultimatum demanding the reversal of the increase in the electricity tariff. However, the Ministry of Power, through its spokesperson Florence Eke, said the justification of electricity tariff hike at the Senate public hearing on Monday last week by the Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu, was still valid. The ministry had maintained that government was not towing the path of trade unions on the issue of electricity tariff as the burden of electricity subsidy was too much for the government to bear and it was not sustainable. In the meantime, Nigerians have rejected the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission's a reduction of the tariff payable by Band A customers are from 225 Naira per kilowatt per hour to 206 Naira per kilowatt per hour. The Nigeria Labour Congress, Trade Union Congress, Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Mines and Agriculture, Electricity Consumers and Civil Society Organizations are demanding a total reversal of the hike. According to media reports, the new tariff announced yesterday came 33 days after NERC raised the electricity tariff for Band A Naira per kilowatt per hour to 225 Naira, uh, representing about a 240 Naira uh, per percent increase. Now, what the federal government said it would save a 1.5 trillion Naira, the House of Representatives, organized labor, and the Nigerian Bar Association kicked against the hike in tariff payable by about 1.9 million consumers. 
joining me in the studios now to discuss this is um, AGC board director who also uh, was the former CEO Transmission Company of Nigeria, Professor Engineer Tiko Abubakar Tambo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Right. Well, so much to talk about. There was a lot to take in. We know, of course, the past sector is one that, you know, ha actually has the potential of contributing, you know, immensely to the economic growth of the country. Now, with all that's been going on, the back and forth between, you know, NERC, the discourse, you know, the House of Reps, the Minister of Power has actually been on the hot seat in recent times and also consumers who are saying that, look, is it that you are unaware of, you know, the, the harsh economic reality on ground? It's almost difficult for people to even eat twice a day. And now you increase electricity tariff. You know, of course, that would have, you know, a significant impact on businesses, small businesses especially but now that uh, NERC has come up with this new regulation of course it has been affected by AEDC that um, you know uh, there is now a downward review in electricity tariff one will begin to wonder if NERC has now bowed to pressure from Nigerians well thank you uh, it's not the issue, uh, issue of NERC bound out to pressure but it's the reality of the situation what NERC did was to look at the macroeconomic parameters prevailing at the moment and do the needful. Mm -hmm. They have a methodology of uh, setting the tariff which was known as MITO which envisage a gradual increment of the tariff on an annual basis but at the same time they also have provision for major review due to like I said the macroeconomic parameters. For example, when the band A was increased, mm -hmm. the idea was, as mentioned by all stakeholders, including the minister, is the government intention to remove the subsidy. So even with that, government was really uh, uh, magnanimous in saying that it will not allow uh, apply the increase to everybody. So that's why the issue of band A came in. So only about 15% uh, I believe also of the customers are affected. And but at the end of the day, uh, majority of you know the band A customers and even those who don't belong to that category are coming out to say that there is nowhere in the country where one enjoys 20 hours of power supply uninterrupted. How would you react to that? Well, maybe I, you enjoy 24 hours per supply, but there I, are I, Nigerians who I beg do not. to disagree. Okay. Yeah, you can't say completely. Okay. Because there are certain feeders I know which enjoy such. Uh, Where are these feeders? Well, uh, for example, I, I can say where I live in Guzapi, mm -hmm. some parts of uh, Asokro, we do enjoy relatively up to that. Are those the high bro areas? Well, that's what you call them high bro areas and we call them band A. So that's why they are singled out to uh, pay for that stability or, uh, of power. But the 20 hours uh, power supply you're talking about, is it uninterrupted? You can say it's uninterrupted because there are certain situations where, whereby there are ports okay. which can cause outage, which okay. can last some few minutes sometimes. Uh, have an hour or so before it is rectified so it is not uninterrupted okay. as such but how, how justified is this uh, downward review of electricity tariff you talked about the mag you know the the magnanimous uh, uh, um, uh, act of you know NERC to say okay we understand and we are aware that uh, there is some level of hardship on ground in the country but if you're going to reduce or you know issue a downward review of you know this electric electricity tariff that you already hiked by 240 percent we have uh, the difference now is about uh, uh eight percent if i'm not mistaken or 1.8 or there about how significant is that well it is in the sense that when when that hike was was done if you can recall vividly dollar was exchanging to get into hovering about one what connection what connection has good electricity tariff with, with dollar it with has dollar. a lot yes. of connection okay because even the yam you eat mm -hmm. in your house 
people will come out to say dollar has increased. That's why there is a price but that of, is not the, of the yam. Yeah, that that's what I'm saying. Yam is not important. Exactly, but I'm saying that is a trend in mm. Nigeria. Okay. But justifiably for power sector, mm. there are parameters. Okay. I'll tell you one. Okay. The gas that is being produced to I mean used to produce Generate power, power yeah. is being paid in dollars. It's being produced in Nigeria, of course. But because there are foreign elements, there are uh, uh, gas explorers and what and whatnot, so they sell their gas in dollars. And these just uh, generation companies who are forced to pay in dollars, so it bears the cost. And the machineries, the equipment. Remember that we don't produce even. Uh, 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 so we, of course, we produce cables, but when you come to uh, some elements part of the power sector, we import them completely. So whose fault is that? Well, I can say it is the fault of uh, all of us, Nigeria, the, the, go the governors and, and the, the flourish, everybody. Okay. Because for you to have the, this dollar uh, reduced, we have to export, we have to, of course, uh, don't rely on, on imports. So if as much as possible we try to uh, do our things domestically, we will, we will, we will uh, at least get over this element of, of the dollar uh, uh, impact on goods and services in, in Nigeria. Yeah, but we understand before now that the removal of electricity subsidy will take a gradual process, you know, to phase out. Why the sudden, you know, change? Well, I already mentioned that Ali, and uh, a lot of uh, uh, explanation has been made by by the minister, by everybody. But those that, explanations that, don't no, the, don't the, the, the down well with the Nigerians. subsidy. Yeah. If you look at fuel subsidy, mm. it was removed, isn't it? Has it really been removed? Well, that is another thing. I don't want to uh, uh, dwell on that. All right. But co talking about removal of subsidy in electricity. Yes. If you do that, it means the tariff has to increase so in order to really uh keep that subsidy of the government uh, uh neck so that is why this uh tariff was increased and like you said it's, uh, I, I said earlier that it's methodology for gradual increase and minimal minor adjustments which can be done and it will not affect significantly the the the, the, uh, uh, the people but major reviews like this definitely is a result of certain action and this action is the removal of subsidy in electricity. Okay, let, let, let us assume that the, the federal government is burdened, you know, uh, with this uh, subsidy on electricity because we understand that the federal government is expected to save 1.5 trillion era, right? Um, but uh, after, I mean, by way of removing the subsidy, it's expected to save 1.5 trillion era. But how do you juxtapose that? Because power supply in the country is really epileptic. So if you're going to remove subsidy and, you know, increase electricity tariff for power supply that Nigerians cannot really enjoy, especially for business owners, then what exactly is the essence? Well, there are two aspects to it. Removal okay. of the subsidy, mm -hmm. government is now not, it's not spending that much in power mm. and that amount realized can be used in other sectors of the economy For how long but at the same time yeah the second part of it is if the cost is increased the generate gener the power sector mm. uh, value chain will have more liquidity and as such they will be able to procure equipment to improve the power supply okay yeah but don't you think uh, removing subsidy on electricity, you know, uh, would be like throwing the baby and the bathwater, you know, away at the same time? Because we also understand that efforts are ongoing to unbundle the whole system such that uh, power can be generated and distributed even at the state level. So would there really be need, you know, to remove uh, uh, subsidy on electricity? Well, what matters is appropriate pricing of electricity. Okay. When you look at the cost of electricity in Nigeria before this uh, removal of subsidy, it's one of the one uh, countries uh, uh, enjoying least tariff comparatively. Really? Yeah. Okay. So with this now, it means the country will now uh, have to cope with the uh, uh, appropriate pricing of the of the electricity and when so many parameters change definitely we will witness this kind of downward review by net it is not something that is cast in concrete 
that cannot be changed. It is definitely going to come down as situation improve in the country. Okay. As a former uh, CEO Transmission Company of Nigeria, I'm very sure that uh, you've been keeping tabs on, you know, the the views, the counter views, trailing the carry on of the power minister, um, uh, Debayo Adilabu. A number of Nigerians are now calling for his resignation. Some are saying the comments he made last week Monday were quite insensitive, uh, taking into cognizance the hardship that Nigerians have been faced with at the moment. But what, what exactly are your thoughts, you know, on this? Well, I think uh, as a government uh, functionary mm -hmm. or as a minister, he has to stand out to defend policies of the government. It's not his own policy. It's what the government decided as a policy. So whether he likes it or not, he has to defend it. And I think what he did, he did the, the right thing by trying to educate Nigerians to tell them the stand of the government okay. so that they, they know what is happening. So it's not anything personal as far as I'm concerned. But in a situation whereby, of course, you were appointed as a minister, right, to head a particular sector, and let's say the, the, the government at the top, you know, is probably not really uh, too aware of how things are supposed to be done in that particular sector, you being there, it is expected that you ask the right questions and, you know, have the, the, the right conversations, you know, with your superiors in a way of channeling the, the, the concerns of the masses. Would you serve, right? to the government so if you say that he is there to defend the policies of the government then somehow one would say that it translates to just paying leave service and you know yes sir yes sir service to the president is that it no that's not what i mean okay what i mean is he is like you said the in between yes the government and, and the masses and the masses right so i believe whatever he does he also have the interests of the masses you think so? Yeah, I believe so. So and how would you say that? He's, uh, he's a politician, remember? Okay. So he is definitely not going to risk his uh, popularity in terms of uh, his, his uh, uh, mandate to be a politician or, or whatever. Well, so is, he, that, is, is that what you're doing right now as well? Me? Yes. No, I'm not a politician. Are you sure? Yes. But what I'm doing is trying to, as a technocrat, mm. eh, to see how we can get the power available to people. So that's my own role. I'm not in any way a politician. <laughs> well, if you say so, <laughs> I guess I would have to do a background search much later to find out if really you're a politician or not. But help us get sense of what, you know, the issues are, the real issues in the past sector. You know, um, some, uh, you know, um, analysts have come out to say that um, it's a bit difficult for us to exceed, you know, our generation capacity. And then there are also issues associated with distribution of power in the country. I believe you know better how these things are done. Help us get a sense of what some of these issues are. Well, it's multi-dimensional okay. issues. All right. But I can say categorically that if you look at the sector in three perspectives, mm. generation, uh, transmission and distribution you'll be able to know where the problems are and how to get over them first of all our generation capacity is way too low for this country why is that country of 200 million over just, 200 uh, million yes managing yeah. 4800 megawatt just recently uh, they said it's increased from 4000 to 4008 due to the commissioner of Zongeri. which is uh, quite insignificant yeah it is say. so you can see that is where the problem lies first. How do we enhance the generation? First of all, you have to have generation way higher than the demand before you have stability in power supply. And even when you have uh, adequate generation, you also have the other aspect, which is transmission, which is still being held by government. And the, the reason is that government want to make sure that what even wh whatever was generated is generated mm -hmm by this arm of companies in Jenkos should be able to be well will out to the distribution company. And I think that's why government said, okay, we'll see all on to transmission and ensure that we fortify transmission, make sure that all part of the countries are fully covered by the grid to also be able to absorb this power. Then it comes to gener distribution companies who are the real uh, key players because they distribute, they sell, 
and generate revenue to sustain the industry. Okay, but would, would you say there is proper synergy between the joint calls, the discos, and whatnot? Yeah, there is because, like you know, it's a power, but it's a value chain. Right. Each and every one has its own role to play. Absolutely. And of course, transmission, which is at the middle, is very key because it is the one that now link generation and distribution and ensure that the grid is reliable and uh, uh, and, and, and uh, stable for us to have this electricity flow smoothly so that synergy is, is there and we expect that even though we are on our, I mean different units each one if it's placed according to the rules, we'll be able to have stability and, and reliability and power supply. Right. When you talk about uh, power grid or case of power grid collapse, it's perhaps a, an, an issue for another day. But is it that we are, you know, relying too much on the national grid? And uh, another question would be the issues that have always brought about, you know, national grid collapse. Are those issues insurmountable? They are not insurmountable. And uh, I think uh, even the new development that we had that TCN is being unbundled into TSP and Nigerian independent system operator is a way towards ensuring the robustness and stability of the grid. This uh, new independent system operator will be empowered by law to do all it takes to make sure that the grid does not collapse. By that what do you mean all it takes? All it takes it means to provide the necessary equipment, the manpower, necessary the system operators that can ensure that we have a stable grid. So this is one of the mandates. For example, one key element that I always say is content and generation company, but it's supposed to be an element of this system operator providing adequate spinning reserve so that when there, are, there is instability, these generators will pick up and provide like a shock observer and cushion the effect uh, of the grid so that it does not collapse completely. Okay. So all these things are functions which the independent system operator will now acquire. Either to, we don't have any uh, megawatt kept as reserve. Okay. Yeah. But do you see an end inside to the issues bedeviling the power sector? And do you even see the political will to address these issues head on? Yes, when you look at the New Electricity Act, mm -hmm. which was signed by uh, Mr. President, the 2023. This is Politics and Business TV, and you're watching News Analysis. I still have my guest in the studios, who is the ADC Board Director and also a former CEO Transmission Company of Nigeria, Professor Engineer Atiko Bwakar Tambu, are right here in the studios, and we are discussing how significant is the 8.1% slash in electricity tariff for Band A customers. Right before we went on that break, I asked you a question as to whether or not there is an end in sight to, you know, the many issues with devil in the power sector. And also, if you think, you know, the political will to address these issues headlong is that? Yeah, like I was saying, uh, uh, with the enactment of the new Electricity Act, right. we have seen a uh, real uh, government uh, desire to end off the electricity uh, issues we have by uh, empowering the states to now have their own regulatory bodies right. to issue licenses for uh, independent power producers yeah. to produce in their states as well as distribute. Which is that with uh, with uh, I mean uh, with with, with the federal government does that. So now they are free and they they can invite investors, for example, to uh, invest particularly using renewable energies like solar photovoltaics which we have in abundance and i believe by so doing we will have less pressure on the national grid which is not uh, uh, enough to service everybody yeah and also like i was saying we have a lot of rural areas not covered completely mm. so this is an opportunity for the stock government to also 
provide electricity to the rural areas. All right. Okay. Well, our fingers are crossed and we are hoping, you know, for, you know, the best, especially with regards to this, you know, unbundling um, uh, efforts, you know, ongoing uh, by the federal government to make sure that states, you know, have what it takes to generate and also, you know, distribute a power. But uh, to wrap up the conversation, we understand that ADC is amongst, you know, some of the discos that have been sold. Um, how, how do you feel about that? Well, uh, the privatization, as you know, is about uh, uh, getting the right of atmosphere and uh, giving the public to also participate in, in uh, taking over from government. So exactly that was uh, the mission and that's why AEDC, one of the 11 distribution companies, were privatized and initially, you know, there were issues with the first investors. Government has to come in to uh, appoint uh, interim management, uh, interim management and, and board, and then about some uh, six months or seven, or seven months ago, uh, ADC was now sold to a co-investor. Transco Power uh, is also is one of of, of those uh, who have uh, acquired it, and they have put in new board. Uh, management and I believe what they are doing now is to bring in transformation and uh, changes that can make AEDC uh, be number one in terms of uh, distribution, distribution companies, companies uh. and is this supposed to affect the, the, the management structure the existing management structure well uh, it may and it may not like you know any co-investor that comes in will definitely come in with his own management team right apart from the the board so that has been done already okay. there are changes uh, that took place i think two about two two consecutive changes of the mds right. one is one the other right. but uh, it's now a uh, fortified team and i think they are doing what it takes to uh, make a dc uh, great all right well, I'm afraid we just have to leave the conversation here. Now, I have been speaking with uh, the AEDC, that's the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company Board. Right, that's it for news analysis today. Thank you so much for watching. I am Omo Efe Peace of Semere. I'll be back in a moment with the news update. Good afternoon.